Hi everyone, Nicole Russo in Kentucky and Dan Nillman in New York coming to you with this edition of the Oaks Countdown. This first Friday in May of this unprecedented season, all eyes were on Oaklawn Park. Plenty of action that really highlighted some rising fillies and showed that this extra time is giving connections a lot of options with their star fillies. We'll start with the fantasy stakes in which we saw Swiss Skydiver score her second prep victory. This is a filly who we've discussed as she was keeping good company, knocking at the door, running good races behind Bonnie South, Finite, British Idiom, then breaking through to win the Gulfstream Oaks. She followed up with this win in the fantasy over a game Venetian Harbor and over champion British Idiom. We'll get to them in a minute, but let's stay with Swiss Skydiver a minute. She's doing so well right now, and the challenge will be if they can keep her in that sweet spot until September. But the amount of time till the Oaks and the fact that she's earned enough points to be a lock to make the starting gate gives her connections some leeway to take risks with her, Dan. Kenny McPeak has mentioned the British 1,000 guineas as a possibility for her as she'd have plenty of time to recover following the trip. That is a huge risk, though, for the Kentucky Oaks. Yes, it is uh, a, a classic race. It is on the turf, however. We all know the Kentucky Oaks nine furlongs on the dirt. Yes, it would give her a lot of opportunity to recover, but would it give her enough time to recover? She's still a three-year-old filly. It would be a very long trip and back. And will she be able to maintain the stellar form she's in right now? In the Gulfstream Oaks, there were some handicappers that thought that race was a fluke, that she controlled the race on the front end in a race that was handed to her. Not so last week. She was very good. She was tactical. And she kicked down an extremely good filly in Venetian Harbor. But... As is the entire world right now, we are completely in a in a uh, situation of uncertainty. The Kentucky Oaks right now, I think this entire division is in somewhat disarray, especially if Swiss Skydiver goes overseas. Yeah, and you know, I think there's a fine line you can walk right there between wanting to run in these classic races, these prestigious races, while this filly is so good versus the desire, I'm sure, to just keep her in bubble wrap until September. So it'll be very interesting to see what path they take with her and what path some of these other fillies take going forward. The fantasy drew a salty field. I don't think this was a fluke at all for Swiss Skydiver. Uh, Venetian Harbor was very game after making the pace before grudgingly giving way. Uh, you know, well back to She Dares the Devil in third. Lots of familiar names in this field, but champion British Idiom not involved at all while finishing 10th. What to make of some of the others in the fantasy? Well, I think British Idiom's race was a, a little bit of a disappointment to be sure. We've been talking on Oaks Countdown that after her seasonal debut, we were expecting improvement in her second run. Of course, Brad Cox and we thought that her second run of the year was going to come in the Ashland at Keeneland. And when the Keeneland spring meet was abandoned, uh, this was plan B. And this plan B came off yet another layoff. So maybe British Idiom needed this race as well to move forward. But I would have liked to have seen her do at least some run. This was a really disappointing effort. She was beaten a country mile, and now the thoughts are beginning to creep into my mind that maybe she was an early two-year-old that just has, hasn't moved on. British Idiom all of a sudden has gone from two-year-old champion that was right near the top of this division to a filly with a tremendous amount to prove. Yeah, I certainly think that's the best way to sum her up. Um, as we said, the fantasy plan B for her. Um, I'm going to be interested to see what happens as some of these fillies are hopefully able to get into a little bit of a pattern and a more defined schedule. As we all know, racing around the country, slowly beginning to gear up again. We're awaiting word on additional points races to be added by Churchill Downs as the picture becomes clearer. I know they're hoping to run the Santa Anita Oaks in early June coming up here. But at the moment, we'll take another look at that points list. Here are how things stand after the fantasy as Phillies chase a spot in that 14-horse starting gate for a spot in the Oaks on September 4th. But again, we've discussed that all that extra time could give the time for some other fillies to develop, for some new names to jump onto the list. Uh, the Fantasy is the highest profile race in the division for a while, drew a full field of 14. So Oakland added another outlet for the division in the Gardenia. Piece of my heart topped that field of nine. 
graded stakes winner comical was second antoinette who is on this points list was third a couple of other well-regarded horses back there uh but florida bred peace of my heart now three for five lifetime we'll watch her winning her stakes debut uh dan what do you think of this filly this was a really nice effort, Nicole. She broke through in her prior start with a much improved buyer speed figure, and she backed it up in this race. She's obviously in good form, and I think the additional time to the Kentucky Oaks this year really benefits her because I believe there is more scope for improvement. Now, whether she is of the class of a horse like Swiss Skydive or Venetian Harbor, that's yet to be determined, but she's certainly going the right way right now. This was a nice effort. She beat a solid field of horses not the kind of field that we saw in the fantasy but a good step in the right direction for a filly with nice tactical speed she's extremely likable right and wow so much ground to cover this week as meanwhile at oaklawn on saturday gamine remained unbeaten in two starts with this allowance win over graded placed speech now this is another example of a filly the oaks delay might really benefit a 1.8 million juvenile purchase. She didn't debut until March with an impressive six and a half furlong maiden win. And instead of being thrown into the deep end in a stakes in her next start in an attempt to gain, gain Oaks points, she now gets some time to develop stretched out to one and a 16th for this allowance win, Dan. And Baffert knows what he has with Gamine. He's been quoted as saying he believes that she's a superstar. He's in no rush to get points because he believes when the time comes to get points, Gamine will get them without much problem. This was a really impressive performance, not be only because she showed her customary blazing early speed, but we saw the grit and determination that she displayed in the stretch. That speech is not a bad horse at all. She came at Gamine full force in the stretch, and Gamine refused to lose. She might be the most intriguing contender right now. We consider that divisional leaders, Donna Velosi, she's been sent to the farm for a little while for a freshening. Finite has not recorded a workout in a month or so. And Venetian Harbor, while very, very good in the fantasy, might have some distance questions to overcome down the road. Boy, this Gamine looks very good. But that allowance race, if we look back on the first Saturday in May, that race might be key in determining uh, the Kentucky Oaks and its major contenders. Certainly. And, you know, as we said, we had so much ground to cover here this week. Uh, the picture, hopefully, as we said, as of course, it's dependent on world events with the coronavirus pandemic. Hopefully the picture is going to start becoming a little bit clearer as we get a schedule for some of these upcoming preps and these Phillies are able to make some plans moving mm -hmm. forward towards September. Uh, we'll be here to update you on all the latest at DRF.com and here on DRF TV. Thanks to, for tuning in to the Oaks Countdown.